Good morning, my name is Babette Dellen and I will present my our work about robotic leaf probing by a segmentation of range data into surface patches. This work has been conducted together with Guillaume Alenia and Sergi Folks and Carmen Torres. In large botanic experimentation fields, um, measurements have to be um, have to be conducted on a regular basis to monitor the, the status as a state of, of plants. And uh, this is called plant phenotyping. So, uh, for example, it, for this task, robots would be very handy because um, here re many repetitive actions have to be executed. For example, leaves have to be probed, so for example, by cutting a leaf disc. Um, or by measuring chlorophyll content with a sped meter. Other tasks include pruning and, and treatment with chemicals of the plants. Other important tasks are harvesting, but uh, this work is now not concerned with this problem. We will here focus on the probing of leaves. And this work has been uh, conducted in the context of the U uh, European project Garnix which stands for Gardening with a Cognitive Systems. Partners of this project are the University of Göttingen, the Research Center of uh, Jülich and the Linköping University. Um, so what are the challenges? First of all, plants are very complex self-changing system which exhibit increasing complexity over time, which poses a very difficult computer vision problem. As we can see in this image, um, it's even for a human sometimes difficult to 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 separate uh, individual leaves. And furthermore, for um, for having a robot interact with the plant, we need accurate 3D information on the plant. This is another challenge. Um, in this work, we, esti uh, we investigate uh, the use of time-of-flight cameras for phenotyping. Uh, the advantages of time-of-flight cameras are that they work in real time. So um, measurements can be taken, for example, during, during the motion of the robot. Then we have direct depth measurements, which increases the robustness of the method. It is um, to some extent applicable under outdoor conditions and um, it is lightweight. Drawbacks here are the low resolution of two uh, 200 times 200 pixels and noisy measurements at short distances. And here we can see an infrared image, intensity image taken with a time of light camera and a color 3D point cloud. So we see that the resolution is sufficient to to detect details in the plant so in in robotized plant probing our goal is our specific goal is to accurately place a probing tool on a leaf in order to measure chlorophyll content with a sped meter or to extract uh, a leaf disc with a cutting tool this cutting tool has been especially designed and um, and manufactured using a 3D printer in, in, in our institute. The SPED meter has been adjusted so that it can be mounted on the on the robot. So to reach this goal, we use basically three methods. First, we apply leaf segmentation and, and recognition. Uh, techniques to find leaves and to detect probing points. Then we also use next best view because maybe in the initial view we don't find a good leaf for probing or we want to get closer to the leaf to gather more information. Um, and uh, the third important point is the path planning. Once we have found the leaf we have to approach the leaf and here in this example, as we can see, the leaf has to slide into the cavity of the, of the cutting tool. 
um, here we see a few few images of of the robot arm in our lab and um, here we see the plant the robot arm here's the cutting tool during the moment of probing here are the cameras are mounted on the robot arm in this case here's the color camera and the time of light camera later on we use the lightweight a smaller time of flight camera so the setup became uh, lighter and here in this case this is a spat meter which measures chlorophyll content it's probing here um, a tobacco plant same can be seen here okay this slide has become a bit messed up well so the leaf uh, probing method proceeds as follows first we have image acquisition then we have segmentation then we extract target and interest points then we decide uh, based on, on some confidence measure and, um, and and the measurement of the surface normal on the leaf if this leaf is suitable and if we are in a frontal parallel position uh, towards the leaf if not we go to a new viewing position uh, this is not, not good. Yeah, and um, if, if however we are in the frontal parallel position and the leaf is suitable for probing, we execute a probing motion. Next, uh, this here is um, a schematic of the leaf segmentation algorithm using time of light data. After data acquisition we first do a infrared segmentation using some standard algorithm. We construct a segment graph and then we merge the segments based on the depth information. The goal is to find smooth surfaces which can be curved or planar but uh, they shouldn't contain strong discontinuities. Then once we have found uh, segments and uh, then we can extract the boundaries of the segment and we can do a contour fitting using a model shape of a leaf and using this model shape we can also um, uh, measure the validity of, of the fit of the model to the segment contour once this model is, is fitted, we can also identify a, a, a probing point. Here are some example results. We have here the color image for illustration. We see the infrared image. We have the time of light depth. We have uh, then the segmentation we obtained using the method described in the slide before. Uh, and we have the fitted depth to the segments. And finally, um, we compute the segment uh, validity and uh, find the grass points. The next best view always uh, proceeds as follow. So we always want to go into a close view and a front parallel view of the leaf. So if this is a uh, schematic of the robot arm, initially we might be in this viewing position, so we are not in the front parallel view. Then with the next best view, we want to bring the camera into this position. Once we are in the frontal parallel view and we have found a suitable leaf, then we compute the center point of the leaf. Through the model fitting, we have also the edge point. We also have the surface nor uh, normal of the, of the leaf. Using this, we can no, we can calculate where we want to probe. For example, we want to be two centimeters away from the edge point. Um, and uh, we can also find the approach vector, which is just the line continuing center point, probing point and edge point. And uh, then the robot has to be moved along this approach vector in order towards the probing point. Then the leaf will slide into this cavity. Here yeah, I show some results which illustrate which uh, which illustrate 
that moving to a frontal parallel uh, front parallel view on the leaf improves um, uh, I improves the, uh, the, 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 uh, the the fitting of the of the contour model uh, of the plan of the leaf model uh, or, or for the segments and furthermore um, so we can more easily know if we have found a good segment and second um, related to it we can more easily find um, we have a better uh, we find a better grasping point so we used first an artificial leaf and measured the validity as a function of the of the angle which is the angle Enclose it, which is the viewing direction, angle between the viewing direction and the surface normal on the leaf. That means at at an angle of zero, we are in a frontal parallel view. So we can see here, and here we in, uh, obtain very high validities. That means we are pretty sure that we have found a good leaf. But the further we go away from the frontal parallel position, the less confident we are. This means also that here it would be very difficult to find a good grasping point because model fitting uh, will not work and um, f the same is observed for a relief so the curve follows the same trend and in the conclusion of this is that validity and grasp point identification are improved in the frontal parallel view Next I will now show some results for next best view and probing with the cutting tool. Okay, here we are in the general view of a plant. Now the robot moves to a frontal parallel view of the leaf that has been selected. And now it can probe the leaf by following this probing path I have shown I've shown I've explained before. After probing, a little leaf disc is cut from the leaf. And this little leaf disc can then be used, for example, uh, to, uh, to measure growth rates or to extract other, other important parameters from the plant. I show a second example. Here we are again uh, in the general view. Goes to we go to uh, close frontal parallel view, same, and yeah, that's what we see then. And now we probe. Mm. We further conducted mm, uh, experiments. Um, with a robot mounted spat meter to measure chlorophyll content of the leaf. Oh. <laughs> Aha, now it starts. Okay, we place the plant in front of the robot. Here we see the spat meter. Here's the time of light camera. Here we see that's what is seen here in the screen. And here's a reconstruction of the leaf and the probing point. And now we immediately move and probe and measure here the chlorophyll content can be seen in the screen. Okay. So we are also further conducted repeatability experiments. That means we wanted to know how robust is our procedure once a target leaf is selected. So we repeated the probing procedure for a given target leaf. And in case of failure, we reported the failure reason and we conducted this experiment for different plant types. Here is, um, we can see three um, examples which for a different plant. Here we see the, the, the robot pose in, in, in the model of the robot together with the point cloud 
uh, of the plant, 3D point cloud, measured point cloud of the plant, and with the different with the probing points and the and the poses of the camera and the tool. Here are the infrared images, and here are examples of of the segmented leaves. In the for the first plant. Um, we conducted 20 experiments and reported if it was successful or not. Success was when we measured actually chlorophyll at the end. So here with the chlorophyll mm, content is shown after the measurements. And here is the time for, for, uh, for the measured for the uh, needed for the whole probing procedure including calculation of the, the probing point is reported and here um, we, we provide information about um, failure reasons. The most common failure reason was that there was a problem in the image segmentation and the model fitting so that one would not get invalid uh, probing points. Um, so and we conducted the same experiments for different plants. So. so to summarize, so we, are, we have presented a method for the automatic probing of plant leaves based on time of flight data. We have shown the next best view strategy. Um, where we move to a frontal position of the leaf, leaf and, um, and showed that this improves probing point identification. We further conducted uh, repeatability experiments which revealed a success rate between 70 and 90 percent for th three different plant types. However, uh, the success rate may, may be lower for other plants depending on the complexity of the plant. And the main failure reasons uh, have been through poor segmentation or poor model fitting or what could happen too is that an overly long path was chosen by the kinematics so that the probing point was not reachable. Um, if, if you want to read more about this work, I, um, we have uh, published our work um, on the ICRA conference and the winter vision meeting and also uh, a paper has been accepted um, at the robotics and automation magazine. Thank you for your attention.